friends, my name is Linda Dolkey. I'm a demonstrator with Stampin' Up! in Australia and today I'm excited to be working with the Global Stampin' Video Hop group. Um, we are working this month, our theme is Pretty Pattern Papers and I'm working with the Fitted Florets papers. I've chosen to work with the pinks in the paper which is a bit unusual for me because there's greens and blues as well and normally I'd choose those but today I've decided to go with pink. So this is the card. I'm going to show you a couple of different ways that you can get this effect. It's a really simple effect, but very effective. So I really hope you enjoy it. Let's get started. So here we are. This is the card we're going to make today. It's a very simple card, but the theme, of course, being um, using pretty pattern papers, um, I thought this was a really nice way to show off some lovely pattern papers. And these are new papers. Um, I'm going to show you what's left of the pack. I've been already chopping mine up, as you can see. These are 12, 12 by 12 sheets, 12 by 12 sheets, and it is from the Fitting Florets. DSP, which is part of the new Fitting Florets suite or collection. Um, these are available to customers on the 1st of November, so um, you will be able to order them really, really soon. If you can't wait that long, you can join as a demonstrator and get them in your kit, or if you're already a demonstrator, you can get them right now. Okay, so um, there's a couple of different ways to get them, but they are really beautiful, and they're kind of a combo of um, blues and greens and pinks. Okay, so the colours that I've chosen today, I'm working with these three sheets, this Blushing Bride, this one with all the little um, polished pink and Blushing Bride flowers. Um, then this one here that's got the um, like little little crosses on the polished pink background. Um, and then there is one other. Um, well, they're the three that I use. Actually, they are the three I've used today. So, yeah, it's, I was thinking it's this one is also classifies into the blues. If you wanted to do blues, um, blue bits, I'm normally a blue and green person. So normally I would have done these and I just decided to do pink today for something different. Um, but you can see it's really, really easy to put together some pretty blue papers as well. And these look really lovely. Okay, so you can kind of work with the pinks or you can work with the blues or the greens. Um, really, really lovely. I mean, there is a lot more emphasis on um, the greens on this paper here. And also this one here, this is another nice green. This one is green with a little bit of a blue fleck to it. And then there's one last one, um, this one, the back of this pink one, that has these green, um, like it looks like berries um, berries and leaves this could easily be a Christmas paper something I love about this paper is that it has um, designs that would work well for Christmas but also work well all year round so it's not especially Christmassy but it could be you know you could certainly call this Christmas paper with little red berries and and uh, a navy blue background and balmy blue leaves that definitely could be a Christmas paper if you wanted it to be but today I'm using the pinks and I've already gone ahead and cut up some strips now for this piece, I may, I'm going to show you two ways to do this, okay? So I've used one and a half centimetre wide strips. Um, now, one and a half centimetres, if you want to know how much that is, um, it's right here on my... So it's just over half an inch. It's about five-eighths of an inch um, is roughly how much one and a half centimetres is. If you're using inches, that might be easier for you, but you can make these strips as wide as you like. I've kept mine uniform on here, but you could have some thinner strips and some thicker strips. It, it really, there's really no rules about this at all. So you can decide how wide you want the strips to be. But I, as I said, I've already gone ahead and made my, um, my strips all one and a half centimeters wide. Now, the first way I want to show you how to do this is actually the easier way, but it's not the way I use. I don't know if you can see this. I'm going to bring it up as close as I can. This is like stitching all the way around, and that's because I've used the stitch shaped rectangles to cut this out, and I'll show you how I did that. But for the first one, I'm actually just going to do it because I know not everyone has the stitch rectangles. You could, of course, do this with any shape you like, but let's start. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some Tombow adhesive and I do find this is the, you can use other glue too, but I find Tombow is the best because you've got a little bit of time before it dries to go ahead. And we're going to put it kind of all over. You could also use the other end of your Tombow, which is this, what I call the smushy end, which is, it'll come out here as well. And you can, you can have that going right into the corners and smush it all over. 
all right so totally up to you but we want it pretty much all over the back there all right and then i'm going to start now you can cut i've cut some at five inches some at six and i had a few short ones left over and the short ones are only two inches and they're just going to go across the corner so i'm not wasting too much okay and then i'm just going to because i've got three different designs um uh, i'm just having a look to see do i have any other short ones i've got a couple of four inch ones here so they'll go on here and you can pretty quickly see how this comes together so we're just going to butt them all up against each other it's super simple and then you're just going to alternate that again now this this four inch one isn't going to be long enough for this piece i need a longer piece so this one is five inches so that's one needs because you need to make sure you're covering all of the the rectangle underneath can you see that and because our glue's not dry yet we can continue to stick them on but they're all hanging over the edge all right then i go back to this guy here and then another one of these and each time you just butt them up against the last one so they're all kept nice and straight and parallel to each other And it's really nice and simple isn't it a cool little thing to do so this one is going to be quite long so i'm just going to put that there so i can when i cut some off there i've still got quite a bit left and one last one of this one because i need to make sure i completely cover even if i go over the edge completely cover my rectangle all right so i see there's a little bit yep that's good all right so now okay i've got all these bits and then all i'm going to do is i'm going to grab my paper snips and i'm going to cut using my white rectangle as a guide i'm going to hold my scissors up against that and i'm just going to cut them all off without cutting the rectangle i'm just cutting off the designer series paper or dsp as we like to call it around here Right, so you can see pretty easily how this works. Um, very simple. If you want the stitched edge though, I'm going to show you a different way to do exactly the same thing. And I hope that you'll find, I try and, in all my videos, I try and give some tips and ideas, different ways to do things and give you alternatives and options because everyone likes to do things differently. Um, and if you haven't already i'd love you to subscribe to my channel hit the subscribe button if you'd like to be notified when i go live i do that a couple of times a week um, every friday night and sunday night here in australia um, i go live and you can watch the videos and all right now we have this little um piece here and if i was adding this to my card it would just go right on here and it looks great okay if you want to um, you could use a piece of um, polished pink cardstock. We have um, a scalloped shape. I didn't use this on my card, but you could add this behind and it just fits. You've got to push it all the way down. So you just see a little tiny peak of the scalloped edge behind it. You could do that if you wanted to, but you don't have to. Um, just a word too, I did use a thicker cardstock. So I used Whisper White Thick, sorry, Basic White Thick, because I wanted this to be a nice, solid, strong piece. Okay, so there's my first way of doing this. Okay, the second way, I've got another piece of Basic White Thick here. And here is the die shape that I actually cut out my rectangle width all right this is the third largest from the stitched rectangle dies they are fantastic dies if you haven't got these they're really really good and what i'm going to do here is i'm going to put this on this piece of basic white thick cardstock and i'm going to hold that down i'm going to get a pencil or a pen doesn't really matter because someone's going to see it and i am going to draw around my shape like i said no one's going to see it so it doesn't matter if you go outside the lines or mess it up a little bit it doesn't matter so let's make sure that we're staying. So all I'm doing is giving myself a guide of where I want to glue my bits. But I'm not going to cut it like I did last time. I'm going to do it with my die. Okay. So this time, same thing. I'll be starting here. And I'm going to cover up the pieces. So I'm going to put my glue right around that edge. 
you want to make sure it goes nice and close to the edge so that it doesn't and we just want to cover the whole thing so so later when we cut that off it's going to be they're going to stick all the way to the edge you want that so let's start with a smaller piece a piece and i want to make sure i cover just go a little bit outside that line there and then the next one it, it doesn't matter either which which ones you use um this is a shorter one so i'm going to pop that sorry a longer one but this is a shorter spot so i'm going to and it doesn't matter how much angle you put as long as they're all parallel to each other it doesn't matter this one and then we'll go this one because they're all the same width once again doesn't matter let's get rid of that extra bit so really this is now this one is going to be too short okay so I need a longer one here and then this piece is actually so I'm actually running short on bits so I'm going to cut a couple of uh, more pieces I just need longer bits now than what I had before and we'll make that five centimeters the longest piece you're going to need is five maybe six centimeters so so let's put that and I just realized that that piece is not quite down where I need it to be you've got a little bit of time before the glue is completely dry so Got to make sure I covered the whole thing. I didn't quite cover the edge down here. So then this piece, oh, wrong one. It's just the one I want. And then this piece here. Oop. <laughs> Got bits falling all over the place. But it's kind of a it's it's a little bit like a jigsaw puzzle putting all the pieces in it's very satisfying actually and then this piece here left over from before and save that for another bit all right so now i have all my pieces stuck on and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut my rectangle out of these. So I'm going to run over to my cut and emboss machine and quickly run that through. Okay, so I've now run this through my cut and emboss machine. I ran it through one way and then back again the other way because I wanted to make sure that it gave me a really good cut. And so now I just carefully separate that from the backing. Right, so now we can push off the rectangle. Just do it carefully. You don't want any of the pieces to lift. If any pieces do lift, okay, around the edges when you do this, you can just keep your Tombow kit and use the thin nozzle just to pop a little bit of glue in under there and make sure it's stuck down properly. But if you give it a good push down, all the way around it should stick really well okay and look how beautiful that is isn't that gorgeous so here are the two different panels we've just made one doesn't have the stitching and it still looks great this one has that extra stitching that really finishes it off and looks terrific i do prefer this but this is perfectly fine if you don't have the stitched rectangles um the stitched shape the stitched rectangles it's really hard to say i have a lisp and staying saying stitched rectangles is hard work um but um, these are in our annual catalogue if you're looking for them. So they are a fantastic, fantastic tool. I use my stitch rectangles all the time. All right, let's finish making the cards. So I've got a base piece. Uh, my card base is simple. Um, it's just a um, half a sheet of A4 cardstock or letter, whatever you use. Okay, I've got a little bit of glue here. Um, 
I'm just going to fold that over. Now, pop this down. This is going to end up here on my card, all right? So I'm going to pop some dimensionals behind that. One in each corner, a little bit in, so they can't be, they're not visible. And then one along that long side, just so it doesn't sag, because no one likes to sag, right? As we always say. And we're going to center this on our piece of basic white. So it's the same distance from each edge and top and bottom. So it's centered. All right. Now we'll add a greeting. I've got a piece of vellum here. Vellum is really great to use if you want to create a shape, but you don't want to lose all the background, especially when the background is paper like this and it's so beautiful. So um, you can see that this piece of vellum here has provided a beautiful shape on my card. It's like a it's framing my my sentiment, but I still can see a little bit of the designer series paper popping popping through from behind. So I'm going to use that but behind my sentiment, but on the sentiment, I'm going to use with polish pink ink and the stamp set that matches this is called framed florets. And it's this one. All right. I'm going to use this for a special person on a special day. And we'll pull that out. And it fits really nicely on this little circle from the stylish shapes dies. All right. So we've got that ready to go on our polished pink ink. And let's, sorry, I have to bring my head in just so I can make sure I'm centering this on the, on the circle. All right, just like that. Now behind this, we're going to pop some dimensionals again. So here they are. And three is a good number behind a, a circle, a medium size to a large size circle. I usually do three. And I'm going to be popping this on my vellum circle, centering that. There we go. And you could pop dimensionals behind it again if you would like to, or you could put this on flat. Now this one, I just popped it on flat, which I think is fine in this case. It's just to give us a little bit of a frame. Um, you could put dimensionals if you wanted to bring it up higher. Totally up to you. But I'm just going to go with a bit of Tombow behind here. And then we just need to add a little bit of bling and a little bit of further decoration. So I'm putting it down towards the bottom. I'd like the vellum circle to go a little off the edge and we'll leave that in place there while we do our bow. I'm using polished pink. So this is the matching pink um, open weave ribbon, which is in our annual catalogue. One of my favourite. I don't know if you can hear the rain. It's raining hard on my roof right now. All right, let's Let's pop that in. And I'm going to use my scissors and just chop off those ends. I always keep a special pair of scissors just for ribbon. So these ones don't get used to cut sticky adhesive -y things. They're just used for ribbon. I'm cutting them on an angle because it's less likely to fray if it's on an angle. That's about right. The ends might still be slightly wrong, but uh, sorry, long, but um, we'll see. I'm going to use a glue dot to attach this. So I put my ribbon onto the glue dot, push it hard enough that it makes a good stick, pull the whole thing off and the glue dot comes as well, and then pop it where I want it and it's ready to go. It's beautiful. Right, I might just cut these a tiny bit shorter now that it's on. Right, and as a very last touch, you can see what a simple card this is. I'm going to use, totally up to you, on this one I used um, some festive pearls and did some silver pearls and I thought that looked really nice. There's also these fabulous iridescent pearls, so I might try those this time. I think that's a nice touch. To take any embellishments like this off the piece, you could use your take your pick tool or if you've got a pair of sharp scissors, you can also use a pair of sharp scissors and we'll pop one here 
and then a smaller one over here on my by using your scissors or take your pick tool for um actually i like it a little bit to the side here um you're more likely to get the adhesive off as well if you take them off with your fingers it can be um you can miss the adhesive and leave that behind and then basically it's useless unless you can work out how to get the the adhesive off as well this way you bring the adhesive up at the same time all right so then now i have two lovely cards so one has the silver the silver um pearls and the other one has the iridescent pearls they both look nice I, I don't know maybe i like the silver ones better in this case i love both of these so i think they look good all right i hope you enjoyed seeing that and how easy it is to do this um little bit of um paper I, I, you could call it paper piecing really because we're kind of using strips it's a great way to use up scraps if you've got lots of strips left over from other projects keep them because you can do things like this with them and it's a lot of fun i hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you see you again soon um you might like to click on the next blog uh, the, sorry the next video in the hop um to see what else has been done by our amazing creators this month bye guys